first and foremost, I think that everybody viewed him as a mechanic because he was wonderful as such. But Shelby really saw his talents as a racer and he was a real purist when it came to that. He didn't compromise in the slightest and that was both his saving grace and his Achilles heel as well. Um, because, you know, throughout his life, he'd shot himself in the foot many times because of his desire to never lose any battle. But through, through, through winning battles, Ken Miles often lost the war. And for the first time with Shelby, he actually had somebody who thought strategically um, and who was supportive of him and behind him. Why do men risk this? You know, what is it? And trying to understand, and that was one of the real um, goals of the film is to, how can you get an audience who may never have gone around a racetrack to try to understand the thrill that these men get, the, the, the feeling of being alive in such a raw manner, um, that they do it in spite of the fact that they're very likely to die doing it. It's certainly something that drives Ken Miles is this idea of perfection of a perfect lap. Um, it changes obviously as technology improves cars, but within a certain car, there is such a thing as a perfect lap, you know? If you can take it right to the edge without sliding it, then you, you're doing the absolute top speed that you possibly can. He's somebody who's got no money. The IRS is taking everything from him. Um, and it's not about that for him. You know, it's, it's, it's not about just making money. It's about, you know, well-being and happiness uh, for Ken Miles. He sees other drivers come by and get the sponsorships, the younger, better-looking guys that he's looking at in the rearview mirror. They're always the ones getting hired by the big guns in the racing world, and he never is but he still keeps going, he still keeps going, he never gives up. Our approach to uh, acting is sort of similar to uh, uh, the differences uh, between our characters as well, between Shelby who is uh, uh, more strategic and understanding of the bigger picture versus Miles who's just sort of doing his thing. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, often uh, uh, burning bridges and creating scorched earth, but just sort of feeling like hey, that's the only way he knows how to do it. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed uh, working with Matt, and I think it was a great relationship that then uh, actually helped play into uh, uh, our characters. Oh, it's such a great luxury, you know. Some people talk about, oh, it's a bit more intimidating when you've got a real character. I find it the opposite. I think it's really liberating because you know, there, there, there are eccentricities and mannerisms that real people have that if you were just inventing them for yourself, you might seem like you're just being an egotistical actor who's trying to, you know, steal screen time or something, which really is the opposite of being a team player and wanting a good film. But when there are real people, you go, my God, they really did that. They really had that attitude. I never would have had the guts to just suggest that to a director, but there it is, plain and bold, it's the truth. And so I find there's a great liberation in doing that, um, in playing, you know, a real person. The thing with Jim is that, is, that, is that the characters are really his joy, completely. I mean, Jim would probably be the first to admit that racing's really not his thing, particularly. And so that's an interesting dilemma. When you start, you think, wait, what? You don't really know much about racing. You... And, but what it means is, he learns enough about it to understand uh, the exhilaration, but is not so entrenched in the details that he loses the big picture and the heart of the matter. And it's resulted in just a wonderful film, something that I just take such pleasure in watching. It's, it's a real joy. They didn't know if they could stop at that time, you know? I mean, nowadays, brakes are by far the most powerful you know, part of, of any car. But in those days, they were flying down that Mulsanne Strait at 230 miles an hour. Now, I don't know what top speed you've ever gone at. I know on my motorcycle, when I looked, because I usually just would tape it over because I didn't want to know, but when I did look, it's like 153, and I felt like I was going to go to the moon. 
230 miles an hour in the 60s when they weren't really sure if they were going to be able to stop at the end of that. You know, what type of man is willing to do that? That's a fascinating man and that's worth making a film about. That's what Jim has done so beautifully. It does transcend being a racing movie. The races are phenomenal. They are so bloody exciting, but it is more than a racing movie. These, this is a bunch of dreamers. These are a bunch of characters who the odds are against them that most people would laugh them out of the room in saying they do not belong in this echelon, you know, uh, 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 of racing, but they persist and they never give up. And that's the beauty of it, because ultimately it is about these characters, it is about these misfits who triumph, and it is about maintaining your belief and your passion and following your dreams, no matter how many missteps you take along the way, that ultimately that's the only route to, to happiness. And that's what makes it such a poignant film and brings tears to my eyes when, uh, when, when I watch it. We were so lucky to have uh, many of the sons who are still racing drivers of the actual characters uh, within, uh, within the film. So for instance, at the lineup for Le Mans, as uh, Ken Miles is standing there and he's looking side to side, you know, these gentlemen, they were the sons of the actual guys who were next to Ken Miles before that moment. You know, and you can't help but feel, you know, the, 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 how momentous that moment is and the beauty of uh, the repetition and these sons getting to play their own fathers in that moment, you know. I mean, that really touched me.